Hey, everybody, it's Lauren from 105.7 The Point, sitting with Robert Mother Effing Trujillo of Metallica. Welcome yep. to St. Louis again, Robert. Thank you for having me in your beautiful city. We're so happy that you guys have like seriously taken over. Since this tour was announced that it was coming to St. Louis, the days leading up to this date, we are jacked. We are ready for you guys to just be the mayors of St. Louis at this point. Well, thank you for having us and walking, welcoming us into your beautiful city. Um, it's it's kind of a trip for me because I feel like I haven't spent time here in a while. Oh, but really? I've been able to hang here for the last three days and kind of get reacquainted. And uh, man, the barbecue food is really good here. We do have some good spots. The food is good. You even have great tacos here. Yeah. Like pulled pork tacos. Yeah. So I don't want to leave. Anyway. Good. We want you to stay. You, Robert Trujillo is now living in St. Louis. I, you know, That's such, so interesting that you talk about food because one of my biggest curiosities with musicians, I mean, you're, you're on a world tour right now. What do you do? Like, Is the food the go-to the minute you get off the plane or bus? You know, it is one of the go-tos because usually in each city they specialize in something. And uh, uh, the other day here, uh, you know, I was looking at the menu, it, it, and this was at the hotel, and I was like, oh, man, hotel menus usually aren't happening. And, uh, you know, being from Southern California and Mexican food kind of being a, a, a very special uh, form of cuisine, I thought, well, I don't know. This looks interesting. I'm going to try this. And I ordered pulled pork tacos st louis style and they were amazing <laughs> i was like wait a minute no that's not right and then i had like a mahi mahi sandwich the next day and and usually i only eat those in hawaii so i tell you you're 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 doing great things here with food we got this stamp of approval i like that that's it last time you guys were here was 2017 it was a hardwired tour and it, you were playing bush stadium and it rained its ass off that night that's right i was at that show killed it um and I, when i found out i was interviewing you mm -hmm. i was really excited because um the first time i saw metallica was the death magnetic tour in 2008 mm -hmm. and that was my first taste of robert trujillo on stage and man you were maybe one of the most aerobic bassists to ever exist and so I know you recently were interviewed and you were talking about how Ozzy is the reason that you do the crab walk and that that with your time with Ozzy that that just organically came about but I want to know are you stretching before you were hitting the stage what is like your whole regimen so um before we take the stage we all have our regimen and uh it does definitely include stretching uh Kirk is an avid yoga guy you know that's what he does every day um james gets the pt work done i do a bit of pt but i also like to go to the gym you know even before i come to the uh to the venue and do some uh, uh well kind of light training mm -hmm. a lot of it's more um kind of geared towards uh movement you know, um, kind of roll, rolling around on the floor, doing various drills and stuff like that. Sounds pretty weird and strange, but it actually works really well for the type of performance we do. Mm -hmm. uh, Lars has a whole deal that takes literally like s 75 minutes or something, and he has to stick to that. You know, he's kind of wired that way where it's certain things... You know, a bit of a creature of habit, and, and, and that's the way it is. So we all have our routines that we do, and uh, it just works for us. You know, to be in this business this long and to perform for two hours doing what we do, especially on this stage, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's it's crazy. It's a beast. It's, um, you know, it, it's, it's involved, you know. Uh, there's a lot of cardio involved, all this kind of stuff. You know, you get to navigate the terrain after a while it's one of those things that just comes with time right especially on this stage so um you basically cater to the needs of the performance and uh and where you're where you're at you know it, with yourself and the transitions and how you eat and life you know things like jack daniels and like tequila shots and all that kind of stuff till five in the morning you know maybe not so much not so days. much yeah. Well, and your hardcore and your punk background, I think, plays a huge hand in your energy on stage. I mean, 
you are my favorite person to watch when I go to Metallica shows because it's like, I don't know, man, it's like animalistic in a way that is, but also just like so freaking cool. And I think it's all those uh, years of suicidal that you uh, maybe bring that element of hardcore to what's going on. Here. Right. So, so basically growing up in, uh, in, in Los Angeles, I was active with skateboarding and then I got really into snowboarding. I still surf. When I joined Metallica in, in 2003, I kind of stopped snowboarding um, just because of the injury factor. Mm. In, in s- skateboarding, I stopped doing probably around literally 19. Um, my son actually still skates. Uh, he's really good. But um, I kind of vicariously lived through him mm-hmm. as far as skating goes. I think ultimately I always wanted to be a really great skateboarder and I just never was great at it. So in a weird way, I've sort of had to take that board sport approach to performance. And um, some of those movements maybe are more geared towards skating and snowboarding and surfing, stuff like that. And, um, you know, my years with suicidal tendencies were definitely wild and um exciting you know it was new terrain for me um i had come from mostly a kind of a a more funk oriented style of bass playing and uh you know a jazz background but i always listened to you know of course black sabbath and even suicidal tendencies and and uh um, motorhead and all that so I, i i was experiencing that music through listening to it and then when f- it physically became a part of my life it was like this awakening where i was like oh my god this is incredible you know that i can experience this on stage in front of these crowds and um I, there's nothing like playing hard aggressive grooving music in front of these types of crowds i mean yeah. it's so much fun and still till this day, you know, I'm having the best time of my life. You know, it's just, it's just, uh, I feel very fortunate. And also fortunate to be able to play with my heroes, you know, whether it's Ozzy or, of course, Metallica, but, you know, also Mike Muir, Suicidal Tendencies, uh, even Jerry Cantrell, you know, being able to work with him. So I, I feel blessed. You bring up Ty, your son. I noticed you're wearing an auto shirt here for this oh, interview. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, how? And bastarding. Uh, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. I well, I I can't even imagine. I don't have kids, and Ty, um, he's he's. I saw him at Sonic Temple Festival over the summer with uh, with suicidal tendencies, and I just it has to be the thrill of your life to watch your son follow in your footsteps in his own way and make it his own. But the fact that he is out playing with suicidal tendencies, like, what does that feel like for you? Do you feel like something has come completely full circle? Yeah, it's interesting because I've been. Um been watching them play and perform and it's so physical like when I see them play and I'm just like whoa you know uh, I mean these dudes are like jumping off the stacks like 12 feet in the air and uh, the energy level is off the hook Mike Muir doesn't age it's like he's like a pit bull up there still till this day (laughs) I can't believe it so it actually motivates me when I go to see them play it it helps inspire me to do better with Metallica and just in life because you know um, you see a band like that still doing it at the highest level you know um, in terms of the physical performance and the love for that you know whether it's a small punk club or a you know larger venue or a festival Mm -hmm. you know you just see that energy and it just kind of compels me to bring it, you know? Yeah. And, and one of the things I can say about Metallica is, is as long as I've been in Metallica, you know, we don't phone it in. Mm-mm. Like we really do take a lot of pride and uh, focus into the performances and absolutely do our best. And that's one of the things I learned joining Metallica is the work ethic is very important to, uh, to this band. And congratulations, this is your 20th anniversary in Metallica, 2023. Yeah. When you when you think about and you you mentioned it um, playing with your heroes and meeting your heroes how how crazy is it that Zach Wilde is on this tour with you as he is in the new version of Pantera I mean that has to be 
the most fun experience ever, uh, given your history with Black Label Society, and now being able to have in 2023 um, just a new wave of touring with Zach. Yeah, I mean, first things first, it's so cool to see Zach up there, you know, playing up there with, with you know, uh, Phil and Charlie and you know I mean Rex it's it's exciting they sound so good mm. and Zach has just like always been completely uh how do you say passionate about not just his instrument but about music in general um he was fun to tour with but man he was a handful <laughs> I tell you <laughs> that dude was <laughs> I'm t I tell him to his face, he was out of his mind. <laughs> and uh, we had good times. We had great times. And, um, yeah, it's, it's just amazing to see him up there playing songs that, you know, his brother, his guitar soulmate, you know, uh, played, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, had that sort of connection together back sure. on Oz Fests and all that stuff. You know, uh, Zach's really a, a great person, and it's it's just really fun to be around him again. You know, we're all so busy during these shows and everything, but every time we cross paths, we end up hanging out for like a half hour or whatever. We're always late to the next thing, <laughs> interview we got to do, because we're catching up, you know. And uh, it was also a joy to play on Ozzy's uh, recent record with Zach. Yeah. And to, uh, to kind of have that moment with Ozzy and to share that with him as well. So Zach's back in my life. That's cool. <laughs> Thank God. A, a healthier version of Zach too, I might add. Yeah, it's great. Well, in all the fans' minds, you guys are still, the debauchery is like still happening. So don't ruin yeah. it for us. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I got to tell you something. It still exists Good. because, you know, I, I mean, I would say spiritually too, because there's this thing that happens when you've grown up playing with these guys and these people, it doesn't change, mm -hmm. you know, the way you communicate, um, the approach that you have to your instrument, to the shows, to the spirit of what we do, it's still full on, you know, and, and, uh, I think that's one of the most incredible things about who we are and what we do right now at our age, you know, it's still very important to us. And it's and that, I don't just mean that for myself. I mean that for Pantera. I mean that for Iron Maiden and, you know, ACDC and all the bands that we've been able to share the stage with in the, you know, in the last uh, month or so. You bring up all of the bands uh, that were on Power Trip Festival. That was the last show before this weekend in St. Louis. Yeah. You guys were taking in ACDC returning to the stage. And I just wonder, does that, did their performances specifically give you new energy for the rest of the M72 World Tour? Yeah. You know, it, we, we were there as fans. And then Sunday rolls around and it's like, oh, yeah, that's <laughs> right. We have to play a show. <laughs> You know, and we've got to follow that. Right. You know, um, for me, it was uh, incredible to be with my heroes. Um, at one point, I got to take a photo, you know, uh, with Ian Hill and Steve Harris. Amazing. And I just think back to being a kid and listening to those bands and um, never thought I'd see the day that I'd be able to actually, you know, uh, share the stage with them, let alone get a photograph with him, you know, it just, it was just one of those weekends where everybody was cool. Everybody was humble. Everybody was passionate about what they were, what they do and how they do it. Um, you know, seeing Slash again, you know, I haven't seen him in years and Duff this is the nicest guys, you know, nobody's heads have gotten exploded and gotten big or anything. Everybody's grounded humble and they just love music and yeah. love what they do so it was a, a very powerful weekend i was exhausted sure. monday when i got home i was just like what just happened you know because you know there's a certain kind of emotional dynamic to it too that it drains you in a good way you know it's just such a great experience like i said we were there as fans we saw every band we couldn't see tool 
because they were right before us. But we were out there for all the groups mm. and just, you know, loving it. Super cool. You think Power Trip will do another festival? I hope so. You know, I, I obviously you saw the response to the shows and the bands and the energy. It's still relevant. Yeah. It, it still means a lot. Um, the fans are there and they're going to show up. So hopefully uh, Power Trip will keep will stay the course. I hope that so. a lot of fans from St. Louis made the trek out to Indio because they just had to be there for the inaugural yeah. one. And yeah, metal definitely deserves its own festival on U.S. soil from from yeah. that level. And oh, yeah. I think that's incredible. I mean, if you think about it in Europe, you have festivals right. that are just huge, massive. And we should have that here in, in, uh, in the U.S. You know, it, it I mean, there's so many great bands, you know, in the U.S. too. a um, lot to choose from. People will show up. It's a good time. It is. Yeah. Well, we are so happy that you came to St. Louis, that you put us on the world tour for M72. The new record kicks major ass. We're spinning it at the point, spinning it on Monday Night Metal. Um, and it has been a thrill of my life to get to meet you and sit here Great. with you today and talk about your music history. Thank Robert you. Trujillo of Metallica, the M72 world tour in town all weekend here in St. Louis. This is The Point.